got to be part of a body or, or a congregation or a community or whatever word covers. We are a church. We are a congregation. That sense of community is very important to me. I, I need that sense of belonging to a group, especially a Christian group. And Trinity is unique in that an eight-year-old and an 80-year-old can work side by side to get a job done. And that's one thing that I just really loved about this congregation when I first started coming here was seeing all the members from babies all the way to all the older members and the wisdom that the older members gave. We cross the barriers of male or female and, and the age barriers and all those things in between. When there's a job to be done, we just work together and we get it done. I think the church went, uh, always comes together when we, uh, well, when there's a death in the family or uh, even when there's a birth in the family that they uh, recognize it. And uh, it's very nice. I've been in congregations, 17 different ones I think I was thinking of the other day, and I like the people because they're happy. And some congregations you're in, the people talk about Jesus and the love of Jesus, but you want them to inform their face because they don't quite do that. And here there's such a joy about singing, there's such a joy about seeing each other, and I think it's just great. And they appreciate you. You feel appreciated when you serve here in this congregation. And you get to, to become acquainted with the people and, and to know the people and, and to uh, know their, their wants and their wishes. And, and uh, you, you just try to help the people as much as you can and uh, they in return will return the love that they have through Christ. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? But those things will result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And it isn't just about Trinity. It's about those, all these people that uh, their lives are important to the God that made them. And so they need to be here in a church that cares and loves them, uh, that wants them to know about the truth of the gospel. That's why we're here. We're here to believe in God. We're here to serve God. That's our purpose. Well, they always invited people in town to find out if they were Lutheran or not. And we went around and saw some of them and see if they'd come to our church. And some of them didn't and some of them didn't. I mean, these are, these are downright upright Germans. They aren't real emotional, outwardly. They aren't real uh, showy, but they are so sincere. Well, because that's just a sign of uh, the, 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 it's very important because it's, it's a sign of, of uh, how your church is in relation to other people, how they accept other people. And, 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 the, and you know, the, our faith is that we should spread the word to other people. That's my, always my encouragement to the congregation is to is to be very vigilant in, in being proactive in terms of being in your neighborhoods and with your families and talking to people that you know that may not have a church home and and uh, and talking to them about it because if we're not talking about it then that's really going to make it difficult um, for the future. Well, it it creates a union between the community and I mean. Um, you're there for one another. You, you realize the needs of people. You're, you're not out in that vast area all by yourself. You can, you got somebody to take you by the elbow and say, hi, can I help you? When they ask, how are you doing? You know they truly want to know, how are you doing? They don't want the flippant, oh, I'm fine, how are you answer? They truly do care. One of the marks of a good, a good church, I mean, it's very important that people uh, welcome new people. We have uh, greeters and whatever on Sunday morning to try to recognize the uh, new new faces and you know and people try to talk to them and make them feel wonder, uh, uh, welcome and hopefully 
they will continue visiting us and become members. Any instrumentals that are added to our service, it just fulfills another way to worship God. There's something where you say that when you sing you pray twice because there's the words, but then you pray and sing with your voice and your talent and this congregation sings. Even on a Saturday night, the small group, they're singers and it's great to be their organist. I feel it's a gift and I love it. And I love to enhance the worship. The pastor puts the service together and I like to have the music support the worship with the joy or whatever purpose he has for the service. And I enjoy so much hearing the choir. I think our choir director does a marvelous job of directing and getting the people to um, and sing their lovely songs. <laughs> That's just another way that you can serve God and I really appreciate the time that the people put in. Um, I enjoy hearing the hymns that they sing. Janet is a wonderful director and uh, I think she picks very good songs that they sing. Actually, I couldn't ask for anything better, I guess, because I just think everything we do is the best. Several favorite hymns. One I really, really like is The Mighty Fortress is Our God. It's such a beautiful hymn, and the words are mean a lot. I always like the um, What a Beautiful Savior we have. So. My husband loved to sing, and he's always singing that one. I, I, I like Amazing Grace. Um, How Great Thou Art is probably my most favorite. I love Beautiful Savior and Rock of Ages. It's not in the hymnal, but Yesu Joy of my band's desiring. Uh, our choir used to sing, For God So Loved the World. It's a tearjerker for me. And oh, there's so many beautiful hymns that I crown him with many crowns. I could go on all day.